Hey, and welcome to a lesson on linear equation word problems. So we're going to take another step from what we did last class, where we just looked at words that mean different operations, and now we're going to see those words in a sentence and then try to come up with a mathematical equation. We're also going to try to solve for the value that satisfies the situation and apply these to the real world. A couple of vocabulary terms that we may want to know today. The initial value. Now, sometimes known as the y-intercept, but this is the b in a linear equation because it's the starting amount. It's what you had at the beginning. Uh, for today's class, students always like acronyms, so I'm going to go IV. So when we label these in the question, we're going to call that the IV, the initial value. And uh, also, the rate of change. So this is how something is changing when compared to something else. Our acronym today is the ROC. But when it's seen in a linear form, because that's what we're doing, it's really the M value. So what do I mean by the M and the B? Let's take a look. We're going to be asked to write a linear model. Remember that a linear model is something in the form of y equals mx plus b. And we're going to be asked to use function notation, which we've talked about this year. So we're going to come up with a function that has an input and an output. And we're going to use let statements to define those variables that we use. And they're not going to be f and x. They're going to make sense for our situation. So the first one up is a plumber. A plumber charges a set fee of $95 for a house call and then $125 an hour for repairs. One of those is a rate and one of those is an initial value. Well, hopefully, you'll get more comfortable in seeing that 95, a set fee, is the initial value, and the rate of change is the $25 because it's happening every hour. All right, so we've got their two numbers, but we still need, kind of like the Y and the X, we still need some variables for this. So let's come up with a couple of let statements. We talked about these last class, and it's super important that we do this. I know it doesn't, you know, it kind of seems annoying, but it doesn't take more than a minute to make sure we do this right. So what are we missing? Well, we don't know what the plumber is going to charge, right? We don't know the total cost. It's not given to us. It's made up of this initial value and the rate of change. So we're going to go C for what the plumber will end up making, his charge, or what he cost. And additionally, we also don't know how many hours the job is going to take. So we're going to let H equal the number of hours. Okay? So there we got C and H. And we've got our 95, our initial value, and our 125, our rate of change. It's time to put it all together. Well, the function notation is going to look like this. C parenthesis H, because we know that the H is the input and the C is the output. Now we continue with the expression. The expression for this is 125 for every hour plus the 95 that we started with. Okay? Sorry about shaking the screen on you there. Let's see if I can put that back. There we go. All right, so there you have your first linear model. The more you do this, the more you'll get comfortable with it. That's just the first one. So don't give up on yourself. We can figure this out with a few more examples. All right, next one. The highest possible grade for a book report is 100. All right, that makes sense. The teacher is using a point scale out of 100. The teacher will deduct 10 points for each day that it is late. All right, which one of those is the initial value? Which one's the rate of change? Hopefully you saw the starting value of 100 as the initial value, and the fact that this is going down 10 points per day is the rate of change. All right? Numbers identified. Now let's come up with some variables. What is it that we would need to know? Well, we're probably going to want to know our grade, right? So grade is the output. That is what we're trying to figure out. Everyone wants to know their grade. What else don't we know and would need to know? How about the day? So the number of days that it's late is also important. Okay? So we've got our variables. We've got our values. Now we need a linear model. So the function notation will have the output, the grade, and the input, number of days, on the left, and then we want to write the expression. So let's start with 100. We don't have to always write the rate of change. It's sometimes a good idea to start with the initial value because it's the 
initial value. So let's uh, start with 100. Now deduct was one of those words in our word wall last class, and that is a subtraction of 10 every day. Quick little fun fact here. Let's go through this. What if I asked you to find the grade after two days? All right, this is something we've already done. So let's do 100 minus 10 times 2. So order of operations, we would multiply first, get 20. 100 minus 20, aha, 80. And that makes sense. If it's um, 10 days, if it's 10 points for every day, and I'm two days late, that's 20 points off of 100. Now my grade is an 80. Hopefully this is making common sense, and we're just kind of putting some math mathematics to that common sense. All right, let's look at the next one. A school has 35 members in their chorus and saw an increase of five members per year. I'm going to give you a moment to think about which one's the initial value, which one's the rate. Did you come up with 35 for the members and five per year for the rate of change? I hope so. All right, let statements. How are we doing with this at this point? It is our third turn. What is it that we would kind of need to know? Sometimes the rate of change is just a dead giveaway. Y for the number of years. Okay, so number of years, and what else are we trying to figure out? Well, it's an increase of five members. We have 35 members. So how many total members will we have based on that increase? All right, so there's our setup, and now we want to come up with the linear model, which just means what's this going to be as an equation? So y, sorry, m parenthesis y, and that's telling us how many members after this many years. So it's really trying to help us understand the question. And it doesn't matter what we start with, I'm gonna go back to starting with the rate of five members every year, but don't forget we had 35 in the club before things got going, okay? Hope this is making more sense. If not, please let me know. We could talk about it in class. All right, so now let's use all this information to help us solve something. Let's say that Antonio A, all right, his, his function is labeled A, just signed up for a new cell phone plan and is comparing his fees to his friend, friend Frank, who is letter F. Both of these expressions have been created to determine the number of minutes based on the data that they're using. And we want to compare them to find out how many minutes it will take for the two plans to cost the same. Remember where we had same in the word wall? It was in the equal sign. So how can we make these two um, an equation that we can solve? Set them equal to each other, all right? It just seems so simple, right? Let's take Antonio's plan and set it equal to Frank's plan. So that's using the function notation. We want to use their expressions. Oh, man, those expressions look a little bit intimidating, but that's okay. We've been building up for this moment. We've been solving equations with multiple variables, with decimals. We've been simplifying. We got this. All right, let's take Antonio's expression of 3, parenthesis, 0.75m plus 10 plus 2.50m. Will I have enough room? Certainly hope so. Equal to, now Frank's turn. 2, parenthesis, 1.75m plus 12.50. Let me get that decimal point in there. Minus 75 cents. Ah, just out of room. I'll put it a little bit underneath. And then the 4. Okay? So that's just rewriting both expressions as an equation so we can solve this. Now it's turn, now it's time to do some simplifying. We've talked about to distribute or not to distribute. In this case, we want to distribute, okay? So multiplying, use a calculator if this is still giving you some trouble. $2.25 M plus, make sure you do it to both terms inside 30. Then we got still the 250 M minus 15, because that was not in parentheses and not affected by distributing. All right, let's distribute this one over here. 2 times 175 would be $3.50 M plus $25. 2 times 12.50 makes just 25. Now we still got to subtract the 75 M and then add the 4. 
All right, we're doing pretty good here. But we're still simplifying. We're not solving. We're doing things on the same side of the equal sign. So whenever that happens, we need to use properties. Do you know what properties we can use to rearrange these? Yes, the commutative property. Okay, so we've talked about that in solving equations. So I'm going to add the m's together for 475. And then the number's like normal. Don't do the opposite. Don't do the inverse. Don't do the property of equality. These values are on the same side of the equal sign. So 30 minus 15 is simply 15. All right, same thing over here. Let's clean this up. Let's put the 350 and the 75 cents together for 275m, the 25 and the 4 together for 29. So, yeah, we used to call that combining like terms, but really think of it as using the commutative property to bring those terms together. Okay, so the simplifying is over. Now, we've got to start moving things from one side of the equal sign to the other. And the only way that happens is if we do the inverse. And that means if it's positive, I subtract and I use the property of equality because I'm going to do it to both sides. It's the only way we can legally do this. This is very nice because it cancels out the 75 cents, leaves us with just 2m, still the 15, and then equals 29. And phew! We are finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel because we're just left with a two-step problem that we're probably pretty used to at this point. Let's subtract 15 on both sides, end up with 2m equals 14, undo multiplication with division, and we're left with 7. 7 what? What does that 7 mean? Well, that 7 simply just means that after seven minutes, the two plans would cost exactly the same. And you're asking yourself, why don't these people have unlimited? Well, guess what? Yours truly here still doesn't have an unlimited plan and still gets charged for overage every month. Don't ask me why. Probably should just bite the bullet and do it, but we still kind of feel like it's a better deal not to. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you on the flip side.